Hello everyone, my name is Jordan Fox. And I'm Dylan Gardner. And today we're going to teach you how to make an ER diagram. The process to creating an entity relationship diagram is simple, but before we begin, we have a few basic lessons that we want to run through with you. Lesson 1. Each diagram is made up of entities, attributes, and relationships. Entities are like nouns, persons, places, or things that are being modeled. Attributes are like adjectives. They describe the entity they are placed in. Relationships are formed when you create an association between two tables. There are three types of relationships. The first is one-to-one. -one. So, for example, everyone has one driver's license, and that driver's license is assigned to only one person. There's also one-to-many relationships. For example, a student can register for a course one time, but a course can register multiple students. Another example of one-to-many is a patient can have one doctor, but a doctor can have multiple patients. Lastly, a many-to-many -many relationship. For example, when one professor has many students and many students can have more than one professor. These relationships describe how many types of relationships the tables have with one another. To draw these relationships, you will need to use crow's feet, which we will explain shortly. Lesson two. Now we will explain primary and foreign keys. Primary keys identify each record in a table. Primary keys must be unique, not null, meaning they cannot have a blank value, and non-updatable, meaning it should not change over time. For example, if your entity was customer, your primary key could be social security number because it is a unique identifier. Foreign keys occur when a parent table reproduces its primary keys in the child table. Because they originate outside of the child table, they are called foreign keys. Note that for every foreign key, there must be a primary key in another table that it refers to, but every primary key does not have to match a foreign key value. Lesson three, associative tables. Associative tables are the child of two parent tables that are in a many-to-many -many relationship. You can never have a many-to-many -many relationship without an associative table. An important note is that an associative table that contains the primary keys from two other tables will usually need a primary key that is created through the combination of two foreign keys. Now that you have an idea of what an ER diagram is, let's move on to the example. Now we're going to take you through an example of an ER diagram of a dorm room. Begin by writing the title of the first entity and the parent table, dorm, at the top of the entity. Next, identify the primary key, in this case, dorm ID. Underneath the primary key, list the attributes of the entity. In this case, we will be using bed, desk, student, housekeeping, and key. To the left of the primary key, identify it with a PK. To the left of the attributes, write FK to represent foreign key as these foreign keys will be tied to other entities and tables, as you will see continuing. We next move to our entity of bed. Identify the primary key, bed ID, and under the primary key, list out the attributes. In this case, we used sheets, pillow, mattress, frame, and blanket. As we did before, next identify the primary key with a PK to the left of the primary key. We now move to our next entity, which will be key. Identify the primary key, key ID, and list the attributes below, including type of key. Identify the primary key of the key entity with a PK next to key ID. Moving to our next entity of desk, write desk at the title of the entity. Include your primary key of desk ID, and below it list the attributes. In this case, we are using printer, computer, supplies, and notebooks. As we did before, remember to identify your primary key with a PK next to the primary key. We now move to our next entity of student. Identify the primary key of student ID. 
and below it list the attributes including gender and room number. Remember to identify your primary key with a PK to the left of the attribute. We next move to our entity known as dorm housekeeping. This is an associated table, which we will explain more later when we assign the relationships between entities. Identify the primary key of dorm housekeeping ID and list the attributes below, including dorm ID and housekeeping ID. Remember to identify primary keys and foreign keys to the left of the attributes. We now move to our final entity of housekeeping. We identify the primary key of housekeeping ID and list the attributes below, including duties and type of shift. Once again, we illustrate the primary key with a PK next to the primary key. Notice that the foreign keys in the parent table match the titles of the child tables. We will first form a relationship between dorm and key entities. A dorm can have one or many keys while the key belongs to that one dorm. For the dorm and bed entities, a dorm can have one or more beds depending on how many students are in a dorm, but the bed belongs to that one dorm. A dorm can also have one or many desks in the room, but the desk will always stay in that one dorm. A dorm can have one or many students in the dorm but the students belong to that dorm. When you connect the dorm and housekeeping entities, you will notice that they both have a one-to-many relationship. As we described earlier with associative tables, you cannot have this relationship, thus it is required to have an associative table. In this case, it is dorm housekeeping entity. To connect these tables, a dorm can have more than one housekeeper, and the housekeeping can belong to more than one. We hope you now have a better understanding of ER diagrams. Thank you for watching.